hello there occupy news network reporting from the towering inferno well take a good look at it because this is not the last catastrophe that's about to happen in the next few years and since the government has no contingency plan for these kind of crisis situations it's up to the people to to link up and and uh, using mutual aid uh, help each other out as you can see next to me this is one of the drop, drop, point, drop points for um, for donations and and people working on their stuff and it's it's pretty good that uh, it's just like in new york when occupy sandy was happening you know when the sandy hurricane hit hit new york that people helped each other and, and it was mostly the occupiers um who knew how to set up these kind of things on the streets you know street kitchens and and then cities and whatever and this is a bit better and more organized and and it's it hasn't been a hurricane or a tornado here yet it is kind of due in a couple of years because the climate is destabilizing but this this uh, situation now is just a start it's kind of an eye-opener for for what kind of murderers the the governments are which is not really new to us but but for a lot of people this has been a big eye-opener and there's a very heavy feeling in the air a bit of shock even the police are just standing there looking big yeah we managed to link up with uh, occupy kensington in uh, in new york imagine there's an occupy kensington in new york so that's one step closer to Occupy Sandy actually uh, I'm trying to work to to create a link between New York and London to to work out what what can happen when shit hits the fan <laughs> yeah we got a surprise guest <laughs> next to me here hello it's me raging again um that there behind me if that is not a monument to all the austerity and callousness I don't know what is I mean just look at that and you know i have to say that when you see it on the news and when you you see the pictures of it in the papers it's nothing like standing in front of it when you stand in front of it in physical the reality of this absolute tragedy is, is horrific <laughs> where are we going uh, no, i can see your face and, um, <laughs> and it's a bit nicer and, and more and comforting to see the people organizing behind you and help, helping out there's each other. There's a lot of organization going on here. There's a lot of people donating. There's uh, kids groups being run, which I'm going to participate in shortly. There's meetings happening, organizing groups are happening. Um, nice to see a lot of the old faces coming back together in a way to get things done. The residents are coming together. I mean, amid the tragedy, you know, there's a lot of solidarity, there's a lot of wonderful things happening. Um, myself and some others have just spent some time literally hanging around in the streets and just being available for locals to talk to or give them a hug because, you know, the, the store is a harrowing. I spoke to a guy this morning who his wife and child were killed in the tower. And uh, it, it's... it's I can't tell you how horrific this is, and I really am wondering to myself, is it enough now? Have we had enough yet? Yeah, now that we see up and close and personal yeah. how, how these people are murdering. Yeah. Innocent. Oh, hello. <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking, have, have we had enough yet? When do we say enough's enough? It's getting beyond ridiculous. I mean, you know, this is where we see the impact of the austerity and the Tory cuts actually taking physical form. And this government killing people. I mean, they've been bombing people. There's, oh, there's yeah, a lot of people, things like and, this and getting bombed even, by... And they killing their own tech. people. I mean, yeah. this, this loss of life was so unnecessary and so preventable. You know, if you look back to the um, 2009, I think it was, the Lanark House, that went up in pretty much the same manner. There were Eric Pickles and all those others are supposed to discuss the regulations and what did they do but they sat around doing what they usually do and they said oh yes here's some recommendations but they didn't action it and they didn't get it done instead they shoved it all under the table and sat on it for years and years and now we have this horrific loss of life um, something else the locals have been trying to get across to me as well they're very keen to get out but the media won't is people are being given a figure of around about 100 missing but this tower block housed hundreds of people. 
hundreds of people. And I think when we get the real truthful figures of, of the amount of loss of life in this yeah. tower, I mean, people, listen. It's going to be hundreds. It's enough now. Yeah. It is enough. We have disabled dying. We have people killing themselves because they cannot live their lives under Tory policy. We have homeless. We have starving. I mean, you know, I was going through the Child Poverty Act 2010 the other day. We haven't done a scrap of it. We have millions of kids living in poverty. And now this. And we've also got a batshit, crazy psychopath in Parliament. I mean... She has to be a psychopath, sorry, but she has to be. Empathy, compassion. She's she's grinning on in that demonic, stubborn stance of hers because she doesn't want to lose face. You know, any surely's God, anybody, Danny, with a shred of decency by now would be hanging their heads in shame and going, "I'm just getting the hell out of here." Yeah. But no, why is she still there? What's more, why are we still letting her be there? What is it going to take? How many more people are going to have to die? Exactly. In one way or another, whether they're starved to death and in, a, in, a, in an unsuitable building. And you know, you know, I discovered the other day that the cladding that they used, £22 a square metre for the unsafe cladding, the, the flammable cladding, £24 a square metre for the fire safe um, cladding. A difference of two pounds. So they saved what? Somewhere in the realms of five thousand pounds. Five thousand pounds. Is that what the, these people's lives are worth? I mean, it's just I, I can't even. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've, all I've got in my head are like really fierce swear words right now because, and I don't want to do it because it's not helpful. But. I, well, whatever has to come out, has to come out. <clears throat> I mean, this is not the BBC, so... Those two fuckers <laughs> have got a fucking go. Like, they have to go. And where is the outrage? Like, I've, I've seen people online, like, slating people here. Oh, look, the rioting. Oh, no, that's not the way. And, yeah. oh, look, they're being a bit too peaceful. Why aren't they raging? That's not the way. But you know what? We don't have the right to tell anybody how to deal with the grief and horror that they're yeah. dealing with their grief, it's their loss, they have to deal with it in their own way and I don't think we have the right to dictate to them how we should do it. Mm -hmm. Whatever they do, I'd support them either way anyway, you know, and that's it. <laughs> that's yep. it. That, oh. that woman's got to go. Brighton Connection says that we are set, Tammy. Sorry? Anarchy says we are set, Tammy. Says what? Oh, An yeah. Anarchy, no, Brighton Connection, you know. Oh, hello, hi guys, <laughs> hi. Can you come to London and help us, please? <laughs> We've got a mad, crazy woman in Downing Street squatting. We need to evict it pronto. <laughs> yeah, I think she's going in a matter of weeks, I think. I mean, she was running away from these people, she literally. She gone weeks ago. Interesting, though, the Queen as well. Quite. I mean, I really dislike the royal family for a variety of reasons. Yeah. Not as much the old woman bimbling around the palace, but, you know, the crown and, and the power, I hate it. But she has made me laugh twice this week, old Lizzie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, once when she said she's going to do the state part, um, opening of parliament, have you heard that she's not going to do all the pomp and ceremony? She's not going to wear a crown, she's not going to wear a robe, she's not going to come along in a golden carriage. She's sacked off the order of the gods for the first time since 1948. <laughs> so, Theresa... You're not worth the money, love. Quit it. Get out. Queen is told you. Fuck yours. I'm not spending all that money on it. <laughs> and uh, and also, old Lizzie did a did a number on her on yesterday, of course, yes, because yeah. Theresa May's team's going. Oh no, security, security. And Lizzie's like, hold me crown. I'm going down the street to see the yeah. people. You know. But other people gave a clap to the firefighters instead of the Queen, which yeah, is kind of... Yeah, of course, <laughs> as it should be, because yeah. she's going home to a, a bloody palace with 240 spare rooms in it. <laughs> Remember, she don't pay bedroom tax for either of them either. You know, it's, it's not okay. And that's just one house. Yeah. And that's another thing I'm finding really hard, because I offered to put a few people up in my house, and even if we squatted, this is, this is the most horribly thing, you know, in some ways, that... Even after the loss of life, after the loss of belongings, after the loss of home, after everything these people have been through, yeah. people like us can't just go like... My first thought was, 
Let's go and squat a shitload of buildings and get well, these Well, there's 1,300 buildings here. Exactly. But, you know, if we come and do that, Danny, you know what the council do? Oh, you're all right. You've got somewhere to stay. You're not a priority anymore. And wash the hands Not exactly, there. because it's going to turn into world news that the people are taking the millionaires' mansions. It's just so horrific. That but it's more like a publicity stunt. It's not going to be a long-term yeah. solution for them, obviously. Exactly. And it's so horrific that the council will then go, oh, you're not a priority. When I was homeless, when I left refuge, maybe six months ago or whatever, the council was assessing me to see if I was able-bodied enough to live on the streets. I mean, this is the bullshit in this country right now. It's not like... Look, it's taken them four days. Four days. Four days to, to start looking at giving people temporary accommodation. I mean, what the fuck? Yeah. Excuse me, but what the actual fuck? Where were the counselling services? Most of these people are wondering how they would sphere grief and, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. Why is the government or the council or... or I don't know, anybody not organised some kind of counselling services for these people, some emotional support. It's probably have to be up to us to call in experts. Uh, and that's exactly what we're doing, because we're yeah. placing ourselves in the streets, keeping our eyes out for people that look distressed. I'd, I've just been grabbing people and holding on to them, because what else can you do to some degree? Half of them haven't even got the words to tell you. Yeah. You know, what they've been through. It's yeah, they're just... completely new to this stuff. Oh, gee. Well, imagine waking up in the morning. You just wake up one morning and like your family's gone, your yeah. house is gone. It, it, it's not like grieving's hard at the but losing someone we love is hard at the best of times. Yeah. You know, but to lose somebody amongst this, your local community has been turned into some kind of media circus, and I am gonna, I um, swear to God, I'm gonna flip at the media very soon. <laughs> You know, how can you can't even grieve in peace. You step outside the front door, there's the towers there and it's horrid. Uh, a lot of bodies are still in that tower. Yes. For the Muslim community this is really hard because uh, in in their way of doing things they prefer to bury people on the same day. So their religious observances observances that really matter to them are being held up as well. That's having an impact. You know, and then people are looking at this building knowing that there's people still up there. I mean, I don't even know how to, like, how to find, like, actual proper words for this shit, man. I mean, well, there's not a that, lot of people you know, just standing around speechless yeah, all around. Yeah. If you've seen, they're, they're just standing around. Even the cops are just standing there with yeah, their yeah, jaw, jaws dropped. It's so horrific, <clears> and the council should be ashamed of themselves. And Theresa May. I think she should just crawl off and jump off a bridge, or maybe we should just get them and hang a front tower. Hi, Met Police. I don't mind if you come and get me for that, because if you protect her, you will set cunts as well. And how's your pensions, lads, by the way? But you know yeah. what? That when they hate her guts, they all what is kind of labour, I, I think. You know, you know me, mate, and I find it very hard to detest anybody. The amount of times people have stabbed me in the back and hurt me, and I've still been like, you ain't got any dinner here, or I'll make you one. But you know that woman? No can't do it. I'm feeling a, a rage that's rapidly turning into a vile hatred and I don't like how it makes me feel but... Well she doesn't seem to be human to be honest. She never did. You know that saying looks like a duck, walks like a duck is a duck? It's yeah. totally wrong I've discovered this week. Walks like a human, looks like a human. It's not a fucking human. No. And actually I've never been into all these conspiracy theories right but sometimes I look at her and I think about this like whole reptilian thing and I'm like uh-huh <laughs> maybe you know because it's very it looks more like a robot to me or something the way she yeah, walks like a terminator so inhumane so yeah. inhumane I just she's making deals with terrorists oh yes she wanted terrorists so now she got some she's she's, <laughs> she's put the good friday agreement in jeopardy yeah. it's all this like uh some terrorists are bad but some are better than others, you know. It's like, do we start groups now, Danny? Shall we start some groups about, like, follow the Prime Minister's example <laughs> and, like, just do a mass call out, like, find your local terrorists, put you up and change the world. I mean, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Come on, man. I, I mean, just look at that shit. It's just horrid. Yeah. She's got to go. How are we going to get a gun? You as well, wherever you are, come here, let's get a gun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you've probably seen that uh, this, the Scottish clan, I don't know what, what their name is, uh, have set up an event for next month. It's kind of a vague event, it's mostly putting out ideas to come and descend on this area and, and turn it around. 
that was my first idea as well that anywhere this kind of crisis hits uh, it's up to the grassroots um, I'm just to, to turn it around and regenerate the area because it's not just the tower it's the whole system we live in is, is a death trap especially with and I'm just feeling the whole like by any means possible literally and you can take that yeah. however you want because it's got to go and on top of that apart from anything else if it thinks it's stealing my kids future forget it it's not happening it's not gonna happen too much and I've kind of run out of things to say now because all I've got is a gibber, gibberish of hatred and swear words and I'm not going to make any sense now. Well, that's good for a start anyway. Yeah, <laughs> At least you logged in. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it for now. Let's take another look at this horrible burnt out husk of a building. It symbolizes what, uh, what we've let all these years to, to, to build up. And it's come back home to haunt everybody so that's it for now and uh, yeah I'll report later there's a lot of um, different groups coming in to, to uh, set up their thing here to, to make a change and and uh, yeah try to try to do as much change as possible for the better I'll try not to say anything personal right now I'm still also working out what I can do here and and where and, and with whom. Uh, there was a big meeting, um, a kind of an unplanned meeting in this social club. It was supposed to be just a radical housing network, but it turned into some kind of a residence and activists and you know the usual setup uh, we've seen at Sweetsway and and all these big uh, battlegrounds of austerity and social cleansing. So I'll go offline for a bit and try to find friends. I've seen the usual suspects from Occupy and then and all other groups I've been working with. And yeah, I'll, I'll report back and we'll make some better quality videos as well, which are not, not live streams. So that's it. Occupy everywhere, people. Occupy Kensington in New York and in London. Bye. <laughs> Ciao.